Welcome to the Retro Sega Wonder Show. I'm Sir Nigel, and today we're going to play some Kid Chameleon. Kid Chameleon is a platform game that really has more in common with Super Mario 3 than with Sonic. You're not trying to go as fast as you can. It uses pretty standard platforming mechanics, and you can get special helmets or special power-ups that give you special powers. So let's see how far I can get. The basic storyline of the game is that a new arcade is opened up in town with a hologram room. And the big boss of the hologram room has basically taken over and done big boss things. And so it is your job to go into this arcade game, holographic arcade game, and defeat the big boss. The controls of the game are not too bad. The only thing I don't care for when it comes to the controls of the game is that there's a little bit of slidiness like this. See, a little, little bit of slidiness, a little bit of momentum in the controls, which makes them not quite as exact as they could be. So now this is the night power up with the night. You can break blocks that you land on. You also have more health and you can climb up walls, which we'll see when we get to a wall. Now, when you get the same power up you already have, that just replenishes your health. So jump out of here. There are lots of secrets in this game too, secret blocks and things like that. I don't think there are any on the first level. There might be, but I don't know about them. Take out these blocks here. So we can get to these lower blocks. And there we go. They're P blocks instead of question mark blocks. Now these blocks up here at the top are kind of tricky to get with the knight because you do that as soon as you land on the other blocks. So if you wanted to get those blocks, you would have to avoid getting the knight power up until you got to that part. Oh, and as for climbing up the wall, that's what you do. Your A button is your run fast button. Your B button is your jump button. And your C button is your special button. And that's different from one character to the next. Well, there's the first level. The first few levels are fairly easy, more like tutorial levels as you would expect without the actual endless tutorials that some modern games have these days. New type, Samurai. His special is he can swing his sword, and if you do that while in the air, you can attack below you. Like this. Well, like that, there we go. And this is where we see the first special, or the, the first secret enter the game, really. There's this wall here. Now we can go down the well, down this way, or there's a way we can take out this wall to sort of skip all that. And that's with secret blocks. Just like that. Just like I said, just like that. Then take that guy out. Now I'm not going to be trying to find every secret in the game. I just wanted to demonstrate some of them. Because the main point of this playthrough is just to show you the game if you're not familiar with it, and also just to do a little bit of a playthrough to see how far we can get. Oh, shouldn't have done that. Forgot that was there. How far we can get in the game. That's okay. I think there's, yeah, another samurai right there, which will give us a health refill. Those coins, I don't remember what those weird coins do. They do something though, other than make funny noises. Come here, you. Smack that sucker. Okay. And of course, as is common with games of these sorts, I believe that the more gems you collect, 
the more lives you get. Like, I, th I think just like with Mario, where you have to collect 100 coins, or Sonic, where you're collecting rings, I think if you collect 100 gems, you get an extra life. I think it's 100 anyhow. Ooh, top of the flagpole! We'll just go until we use up one life in this game. The first few levels are pretty easy and linear. And now a new character with this character. His main ability is being able to smash blocks horizontally, blocks in front of him, by charging. Like that. And that's really all he does. And at this beginning part of the game, the game tends to give you the character that is best for the situation. But later on, I don't think there's a secret here. Later, whoa, late, oh, there is, haha. -ha. Later on, you kind of have to start choosing which characters you want to use and which characters you want to skip for whatever you think would be best for the given situation. Like here, we have to use the knight so we can climb up the wall, but not too high. And then it will give us the rhino guy back. Happy little Mr. Rhino horny guy. Oh yeah. So that we can take care of this wall here. Just like that. Use our run button. Let's do a little bit of fast forwarding through the level. These enemies here tend to be kind of annoying because not only do they spit their little spitters, but as you can see, they sort of blob up and blob down whatever. So you, it, you have to be more careful about timing your jump to take them out. This is sort of a rather obvious secret here. After you clear that wall, you run and jump, and there's this secret room where you get all sorts of more gems for those that really like to collect things in the game, along with some secrets too, some secret blocks. Like this. It would be interesting if at some point Sega re-released Kid Chameleon for modern uh, gaming systems and if they offered a uh, Kid Chameleon Maker like something like Super Mario Maker except with Kid Chameleon there we go and here we are it's the level flag All the points. And a new type of enemy. These blocks here are interesting. You hit them and they grow. Oh. When that when that happens, you just gotta wiggle all over the place. And a new power-up. I believe each area has two levels in it. So this is, for instance, the second of this sort of cave type level. Cave type area, I should say. Oh, and another, another enemy. These enemies you can only take out with the sword by hitting them from the side. You can't jump on top of them because they're kind of pokey. They're kind of pokey. Is that another, uh, yes, that is another one of those. Good. See, now we can take them out. There we go, just like magic, except they respawn, which isn't so much magic. Dang it. Oh, hello there. Now let's see, what's around this area? Okay, so you need to be careful about that jump right there. And careful about those spikes and the, these hands, and you should always be careful about your hands. 
the clock is running out in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. That's another thing about this game is, well, like most games of this sort, there is a clock you have to keep track of. Whoop! Secret that I forgot about. And you can find clocks around here, somewhere, around the game, to refill the clock. There's one. Put three minutes on the clock. Give you a little more time to explore and such. Now here's an instance where you have to decide which character you want to keep. You can keep the guy that throws the axes, who looks very familiar to a certain other classic arcade game, or you can get the, uh, hi there, hi there, get the little samurai hat. Teleporter, I think maybe we'll pick up the, uh, the samurai guy on the way back. And we'll use Mr. Axeman for this part of the level. Just for the heck of it. Yeah, games where eh, the enemies respawn after you leave the screen are not my favorite. I mean, that's, oh, that's not my favorite mechanic. Okay, let's go get that samurai now. So we can restore our power-ups. Or it can take you to a completely different part of the, the game world. That works too. I guess this counts as a secret area. Come on. Here we go. Vroom. Now that's super magic. I think we get another type of power up. I, I didn't mean to stand on that block, whatever. So, different level, hooray! Whoop! And that's the good thing about this guy right here. You'll notice that you do get a score in the game. Different type of character with a blam blam. Even though it doesn't display the score on the screen while you're in the level, it only displays the score between levels. So this character here is interesting, but the problem with this character is there are places where it can't fit. It's a little bit slower. It has its bouncy skull projectiles and it can jump. Whoa, get out of the way. But there are places in the game you just can't get with this character. Okay, let's just try to, uh, let's, let's not, whoa. Can we get in here? Okay. Well, that's that. So that's just a little look at Kid Chameleon for the Sega Genesis. So that's going to do it for this video. Retro thumbs are magic. Follow and subscribe for more. And thanks for watching the Retro Sega Wonder Show.